Hi, hello and welcome. So today we are going over this week's weekly challenges in Gran Turismo 7. So we have five events, brand new prizes to be won. And at the end of it, for completing all five events, you will end up with a grand total of 800,000 credits. Yes, we are receiving three credit tickets this week. So look, overall, it could be better, but honestly, it's not bad prizes to be won. So, with that being said, let's dive straight into the first race. So, the first race sees us hop into an American FR Challenge 550 around Laguna Seca. So now, this is honestly just free reign, whatever vehicle, whatever American front engine rear wheel drive vehicle you want, with the exception of it needs to be around the 550 mark if you want it to be competitive or you can just completely jump into whatever maxed out American car that you have and just like around the circuit. So for me, I hopped into a Corvette Z01 and when I tell you this vehicle was an absolute blast, it had ample power, it honestly just dominated the competition, there was no competition. It was more of you going so fast and you just need to avoid the other drivers. So, honestly, a bit too overpowered. So, if you are looking for more of a challenge, well, obviously, go for something slower. But if you want to get it done extremely quickly, like I did, because this event only took me two, 2 minutes and 51 seconds. So, in under 3 minutes, I earned 100,000 credit tickets. I earned 10,000 from the overall event. So overall, 110,000 credits in three minutes, not too shabby. And the event actually just gives you the opportunity to really push the limits of your favorite American vehicle. And for me, that is the Corvette. Now, moving on to the second event, we are still sticking to something that I consider very American. Because we see we are heading over to Daytona Tri-Oval because we are going to be jumping into some pickup trucks. So your choices are the Toyota Tundra or the Ford Raptor. So for me, I jumped into the engine swap Ford Raptor and just went extremely fast around the circuit. Averaging, I'd say, what, over 300 kilometers per hour. So yeah, the event doesn't take long. It took me a total of 3 minutes and 42 seconds and that was with me having a bit of an incident where I did collide with the AI. But overall, under 4 minutes, 30,000 credits. Not too bad, super simple, easy race, nothing really challenging about it. So, I know people aren't really fans of the pickup truck races, but hey, this was a super, a super easy, simple one and relatively quick. And relatively quick to get done. Now, when we move on over to the third event, well, this is a race of turbo sports cars around Saintsy Crooks. Now, this event had a performance points rating of 700 performance points. Now, if you've been playing the game for a very long time, well, you will know that you should have ample vehicles around their performance points mark. It's really easy to actually tune a ton of vehicles to come under this limitation. So it's really up to you what you want to go for. But for me, I jumped into my Nissan Skyline R33 GTR. Not the Nismo version, not the Nismo 400R, but the actual R33 GTR that has the engine from the R92CP. And that's honestly my go-to, it's such a fun vehicle at 700 performance points and it's just so good. And around St. Crooks, it was no different, it was an absolute blast. I had no, it was no point in time that I thought, okay, I need to stress, the uh, competitions are a bit scarce, a bit tough. I had no struggles with it, the vehicle had great handling, ample power, and it was able to just be a really fun and an enjoyable experience and overall the race took me nine minutes to complete which is a lot longer than the first two events and with me completing now a third event i also got a credit ticket for 200 000 credits so not too shabby now moving on to the fourth event this one was a bit more challenging because this was a wtc 600 
around a Nurburgring GP layout. Now, with it being a WC 600, it had a performance points rating of 600 performance points. Now, this is a lot trickier than 700 because there are a lot less vehicles that can be really fast and still under 600 performance points because even most of your supercars you will find over the 600 performance points mark standard so your car choice is really unique and a lot more slimmer compared to a WCC 700 so for this event I hopped into a Suzuki Cappuccino with an engine swap so that was uh, a riot that's the best way I can put it. The Suzuki Cappuccino, I will admit it, probably wasn't the best choice to go for. Because look, the Suzuki, the brakes aren't really the best. It has plenty power and handling because it is a K car and it's small. It doesn't really have the widest stance to really be plants around the circuit. It doesn't have a lot of downforce. But look, I was still able to get the event done in a total of 10 minutes and 12 seconds. So, look, there probably was a better choice to use, but it did grant me an easy win. I had no struggles with it. And this is with all of these events being played on the hardest difficulty. So, not really a challenge. And after the events, it did end up getting 80,000 credits. Now, if you do end up getting clean race bonuses, that prize money will just increase. So, the last and final event was the special event. This was an All Japan GT Car Championship around Fuji International Speedway. And this race saw no limitations. You could have jumped into whatever car you wanted, which I thought was crazy because considering the fact that you would have jumped into a Tomog Vision GT. The limitations was honestly endless. But for this one, I thought, you know what, let me be realistic. And I jumped into the new edition of the Honda NSX GT500. And when I tell you that vehicle, all it needed was just a bit longer gears. And it was perfect. I had no complaints about the Honda NSX. Because look, there's no fuel consumption, there's no tire wear. It's really just you jumping into a classic Japanese vehicle, which is as recommended. And going around the circuit because your main rivals is the Toyota Supra GT500, the Honda NSX GT500, the Nismo RTD2 GTR, and I'm forgetting the last one, but it's a lot of classic 90s race cars and it's just a lot of good fun in a very period correct event so this event it was the longest of all events and it took me a total of 16 minutes but i did end up getting 150,000 credits for finishing in first place and this is without a clean race bonus so if you manage to complete this event with a clean race bonus you are going to see the figure be over 200,000 credits. So, all in all, and also with you completing the fifth and final event, that will get you a credit ticket for 500,000 credits. Yes, half a million credits for completing all five events. So, in a grand total, for under an hour's worth of gameplay, well, you are gonna find yourself with a grand total of 1.1 million credits so not too shabby for an hour of gameplay look it may not be the fastest way to make money but hey it's still a unique way to actually just earn over a million credits so can't really hate on it and what has been said let me know your thoughts of these events in the comment section let me know what cars you used and with that being said thank you so much for watching thank you so much for your time and i'll see you guys in the next video peace